You come and go, you come and go. I don't know, <laughs> man. Now I'm thinking about it. That <laughs> that line, what is it? What is um, it? Something that I'm going to lie my dream. <laughs> it ends in man. dream. I come and go. <laughs> Red, gold, and green. <laughs> I don't know. Um, the karma chameleon. Karma chameleon. <laughs> <laughs> karma. Chameleon. Karma Kandara in Bali. Great <laughs> resort, bro. <laughs> Ulubatu. Amazing. <laughs> Is a song by English band. What? Culture Kings. Club culture. Club culture. Oh, that? Culture Kings. Culture King Street Street Mall, baby. <laughs> Shout out to all you fresh snapbacks and basketball teams. And one. Dickies, <laughs> oh, we got we got plain white Gildans. Yeah, we'll yeah. get you. We got them Jordans. Someone say Air Force One, yeah. son. <laughs> them white Air Force One. Got to wear them at gossip, hot yeah, gossip no, no, on the no. weekend, yo. Got that fresh R and B Fridays. <laughs> 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 Have you heard of the? Uh, there's a version of Tinder available in America <laughs> these days uh, for entirely African Americans called Soul Swipe. <laughs> no Soul swipe It's the African American Tinder Over there So you have to be African American To create a profile on there and, uh, Soul swipe And in order When you match The woman has to Initiate conversation So you just can't send that BBC <laughs> Straight up on the DM Like you feel or The woman has to Engage in conversation Yeah I, heard, I only heard about that The other day actually <laughs> But yeah, the knockoff. We're off, wow. to, a, we're off to an absolute flyer. <laughs> We've been recording the whole yeah, time. Yeah, so. off to a flight. Didn't realise we were on. I look over at the lappy and the clock's going, but we're back on deck. In case you that's didn't, the way we do. That's it. In case you didn't recognise that voice at the start, uh, that's Kyle Stephen. He's back to throw down again. Welcome, buddy. Thank you very much. Hey, peeps. Uh, it's good to be back. Uh, <laughs> I had such a great time last time, and yeah. you know I'm ready to give it round two. That's it. Got a glass of red vino. Mm. We're chilling. It's Thursday night. I'm on the uh, water because I just came from cross. CrossFit. <laughs> uh, I'm not even going to co- commit to calling it CrossFit because it's vegan not. vegan now and yeah. I just came from CrossFit. How's that paleo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Soon it's going to be paleo, yeah. like oh, making right. your own Shout milk out, out, out of CrossFit. almonds. That's CrossFit's it. a fucking hard sport to it participate is. in. We this got some, um, we got some popo oh, in, probably, yeah. in the background in Julia Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, don't worry, fam. We holding it down. We holding it, it down. Yeah, We're coming yeah. to you lot. We got the lights off. They won't be able to. They'll think no one time. Blue lives matter, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Sitting in the dark, drinking wine, recording <laughs> ourselves. Top. It's on a, yeah, it's Thursday, but fun. yeah, I'm on the uh, I'm on the water because. I wouldn't even refer to it as CrossFit because I'm not a CrossFitter. But, no, uh, you did some circuit training. Yeah. Circuit work ga- yeah. in your mate's garage. Yeah, it's a bit of, bit of gazer exercise. So that's a way to do it. Just that's a bit of circle it. jerk in, the, in your mate's garage. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was after the workout. <laughs> that was afterwards. Get the testosterone <laughs> up. Do you, um, it's amazing though that um, like how much you can do garage style, prison workout, whatever you want to sort of call it, how much you can do with very little equipment like – I mean, the perfect example is is prisoners. Those dudes are jacked. Like, yeah. That, you know, you see in hard time and all that sort oh, of stuff. Yeah. you got nothing to do the whole day but work out. So it's like, these young ones, they can't keep up with me. <laughs> Remember the old bloke on yeah, uh, hard time yeah. and about the Ohio the, prison? Oh, They've man. They've all got oh, exercise yeah. as part of their routine. You can't say that about everybody in society. Oh, Definitely no. not. That's right. There's a lot of people who have... Absolutely no exercise as part of their routine. Not even like you know walking, walking to the to the train station mm. or anything. No, there's they a, walk around at five by ten or something, yeah. just in in circles. You're dead right. You see it. You see it a lot. But yeah. <laughs> Look, looking to get back into it, were you touched on? If you didn't listen to Kyle's episode, he had a a military background no longer in there. What sort of training and shit did those guys get up to? There was a morning regiment of personal training. Well, or? man, I think you had about. Fifty percent of the people in there were really into fitness. Uh, well, it 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 really differed with uh, what core you were. Um, I was cavalry, so I just I ticked the box for wheels and not walking. I didn't walk anywhere. Fuck that shit. Yeah, yeah, walk true. on something you can blow up. You know. Yeah, like, yeah that's true. Yeah, no, but uh, they really a lot of them were into CrossFit, man. They did CrossFit at four, and I remember waking up my first night I ever spent in Afghan at the patrol base. 
and I wake up at four in the morning. It's light there, like because in the summer it's you know it's bright so early, and I see these boys there that we were taking over from, and they were doing hardcore CrossFit, like all of them, man, wow. and they were all ripped. Is that out of? Uh, <laughs> Just having a bit of downtime there, so it's yep. like, well, let's let's keep up on this. Like, yeah, so you're there for about eight months, you know, and so these guys are they obviously went there, and I mean, there's not much to do, and if you've got a few days off in a row, dudes are going to be going morning, lunch, night, like um, seven times a week, you know, like <laughs> they are really committed, and they're obviously like getting some of that good American stuff in because you could get like if you had an American. Address there, you could get American parcels right. and Americans have supplements, a little supplements. Get that on it, oh, supplements yeah. coming in, yeah. yeah get that <laughs> HGH, <you laughs> <feel>? yeah, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> yeah. I nah. love how you and, like and mention a brand name, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it just comes out uh, with the name of a, just trying to steer a well known illicit substance, just trying to steer him away from it, just <laughs> bam, right into it. Oh, uh, sorry, <laughs> I did, I meant creatine, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that oh, hardcore oh, creatine, oh, actually. What I meant, was yeah, creatine. Well, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, it was totally career team, man. But these boys <laughs> were... So much back knee there. Like, Dude. <laughs> mass back knee. Yes, especially when your base is up in Townsville as well and everyone's wearing singlets, but mm. everyone looks like they're 15, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, it, everyone's it, got yeah. major acne. Yeah, it'd be... Um, well, not everyone. Yeah, <laughs> like, no. no. It's 95%. Uh, <laughs> it, roughly. Yeah, there's a... There's a yeah, 50-50. Yeah. <laughs> But it is something that, like, is is well known is that the military turned a bl- turn a blind eye to um, steroid use in, in like in America. I wouldn't. I, I think it's a little bit more lax because have you seen some yeah, of these dudes, right. man? Like, if you look on some of the Marines, no, that's what I'm saying. IG, they that, turn it. They turn oh, a blind yeah, eye yeah, to yeah. it because they condone it. It's yeah. like you know, go for it. You're, yeah. you're a soldier. At, um, not out here though. No, no, way. not no out way. here. PED, no. uh, yeah, man, pretty stringent. Like the right. the Yanks might be able to. Um, Source up, but uh, no, we out, out here there are like we have to be careful what protein powder we can have in Australia, you True. know, like it's, it's the old it, tainted supplement, yeah, UFC style, yeah. like doing the John Jones, like, yeah, and and no, look, while I was up so living on base, man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> while I was living on base, um, in the mornings, on like maybe three times in two years, I was there, cops coming in really early morning and really? doing raids, yeah, they got some of the biggest busts. They're like um, now is that military police or regular police? Both, right. both men. Like these guys were big into it. They had like their whole army trunk full of um, just uh, what all. Were the, what were their names, man? Oh yeah, well <laughs> um, there was private. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not allegedly either. Yeah, like, yeah. Those guys I'm starting to get serious with our under the buses. <laughs> oh, have you shit? Yeah, man. Fucking hell. I haven't thrown anyone yet. For the record, I'm just here for the ride. I'm, I'm riding. Just, ride. I'm just rolling, baby. <laughs> You'd said you'd taken a uh, um, mixing up your training, Danny, to a uh, bit of backyard stuff for the moment. Like you yeah, having a I week think, off? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I think just the. Um, the change in seasons for me it's summertime so the sun's up early you can get out of bed without having to chuck on a tracksuit and a beanie straight away and you can walk out the back and enjoy a little bit of sunlight before work like for me personally i work in an office and i sit you know in indoors under fluorescent lights for the majority of the day Mm. um eight eight nine hours i guess like probably not nine hours Fluorescent yeah, lighting. Never. Telling, telling fibs there. Never nine hours. Seven, seven, <laughs> seven to eight. <laughs> Just look at my time sheet, bro. Yeah, yeah nine if, hours. Yeah, if I'm annoyed, five thirty. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Oh fuck, man. Yeah. The, the joys of it. But um, but yeah. So just mixing it up a little bit, but it's good. Like I built a little um, I built a little sort of gym set in the backyard, um, just with a couple of timber uprights with a bit of Rio bar to. To go between them, hung some rings off one, and then the other axe is a chin up bar just on a little concrete slab. So, but I've been doing stuff like, um, like these sort of, I guess there's squat jumps, but like a frog leap type of thing. Oh, yeah. Because my um, backyard is kind of slightly inclined. So I'll sort of just squat down to a really low position and then essentially bound up like a frog and then move Not forward and oh. then land and go back down to that frog position Jeez. and boing and up again. Real deep How squat. Many? Uh, like t- it takes me ten to get oh, up the hill, ouch. and um, but Shit. yeah, by the time you land on the tenth one, you're not going down to frog status again. You're just like, oh, thank God, that's yeah. Like, like, yeah. Oh, that sounds tough. Yeah. Oh man, that's a deep squat. That's uh, yeah. Um, I'll just do that. I'll make my way up to the backyard, and then I might do ten dips on the rings, ten pull ups, and then do some walking lunges back down the yard. 
do some sort of like L sit between a couple of chairs on the little back deck. But the whole time I'm doing it in the garden, the sun's shining, I've got mm. a little bit of incense burning, I might be listening to music, I might not. But that compared to the gym that I go to is literally, you know, 6 a.m. in the morning, oh. you've just woken up, all your senses are really sort of still coming together and, and like everything is, is quite sort of gentle at that time in the morning and you walk in and it's club lights and it's like fucking yeah full on dubstep like loud as fuck everybody chicks with makeup and beats by dre earphones on and Mm. and like high top sneakers and it's just like whoa i just walked into the circus Mm. (laughs) but you quickly adjust and and for me i i can't i I can't listen to the music in my gym i've been in gyms before that play decent tunes Mm. but I just I just go home with my earphones and try to block it out more than anything just to use the equipment. I but, wonder um, what it is with that sort of genre that they choose that. Yeah, I think it's just um so got, you can't be the only person that's like, oh fuck no, these beats. Hard bass. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, I d I don't know. The the music choice is a, a different beast altogether. I thought you were talking about like, you know, bodybuilding types that go like in no. the razorback singlets and stuff. And no. I was gonna make a comment about Instagram and narcissism and all yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah. But I think I think we're well aware of that type um, of genre of person, but the music, I think, just comes down to poor fucking management yeah, choice. Yeah. <laughs> That's all that shit is. I think they originally, all got... originally, this is no no bullshit. I don't know where they got the fucking idea from, but for the afternoon session, they would have a DJ that would play and like really fucking loud. The DJ would turn it the fuck up, man, and wow. and you'd be there with with noise cancelling earphones in, and you could still clearly hear whatever dubstep this guy was playing. Like when the bass drop. Oh, oh man. My God. <laughs> It's just like city beat, Full on, man. man. Oh, Full no. on. People, d- they're doing peck deck. Like, city <laughs> beat. <laughs> 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 oh, get fucked, man. Yeah. What, yeah. um, you were talking at one point about having an amateur boxing fight in terms of music. Always ask people what their walkout song would be. Oh, yeah, man. Remember well. when we were trying to convince oh. you to, um, have a lot of Morris. Yeah. What do you mean? Try, yeah. man. You yeah. did. <laughs> Cause I got a one hand in my pocket and the other one is by my nice cigarette. KO. I'm broke, but I'm happy. <laughs> Walk off. I'm brave, but I'm, I'm chicken <laughs> shit. <laughs> Shout out to the favorite Canadian, uh, Alanis. I can get down with some Alanis, man. No, yeah, I mean well, that that jagged little lie. pill album yeah. was obviously a quintessential album for anybody who was born in the late eighties, early nineties. I appreciate it more now, but than um, I did then. But I I don't listen to it now. I necessarily enjoy it. It's one of those things that you've heard. So oh, it will yeah. come on the yeah. radio yeah. and you'll go, all right, yeah. all right. It's up there with a Tracy Chapman fast car. What and she, you know? But Tracy Chapman fast car, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just, you know, yep. beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Everybody has their own taste in music. But Not a fan. Tracy Chapman, I could listen to now and yeah. dig the fuck out of I it. I like fast Whereas car. Whereas Alanis mm. Morissette is just novelty for me. <laughs> what it all boils down to. Shout out, Alanis. I'm My sorry. My friend. Like, yeah. She's oh, she's been there. You don't need that. me to validate your <laughs> no, your self worth yeah, yeah. as a musician. That's for damn yeah. sure. When I was um, I've this talked guy about from the knockoff podcast. Really oh, no, doesn't fucking rate me. I've talked about um, working at Baby Gap before and shit like that on uh, on the podcast. When I was there, there's two times where I'd missed out. Where one, I went on a lunch break. Who comes into the register? I, I sub out on the register, oh, go down no. to get um, fucking whatever for lunch, take my break, come back. Pommy dude at the register goes, "You just missed fucking Pamela Anderson." No. Oh, God. oh, get fuck! I was like, "Are you serious?" He's like, "Wouldn't lie to you." Like, an other little Croatian girls there, like, "Fuck, oh, like, huh. no!" And uh, another time where I wasn't rostered, I missed Alanis. Like, she'd come in. Uh, yeah. oh, man. Both Canadians too. So. Uh, On the slopes, yeah. Pamela is as yeah, well. Um, hey. but she the... came into Gap. All so right. I don't, don't know why. But Summer, winter. She'd buy the whole fucking shop if she wanted. To. <laughs> yeah. uh, winter. Mm. Yeah, they were probably hitting the slopes. Yeah, hitting the powder on and off the slopes. I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly yeah, shout, out ben, <laughs> shout out Benny <laughs> Benny came on the fucking podcast <laughs> And his episode He's like All I'm saying is just as much powder in the streets there as there is up in the mountain, like some fucking <laughs> something like that. Like, uh, allegedly, <laughs> yeah. Not when I was there though, definitely, man. mate. Canadian, um, Canadian MMA. There's talk of. George St. Pierre coming back. The beautiful main, the main, segue. yeah, the beautiful main, yeah. segue. The main Canadian is uh, no, I'm okay, thanks. The uh, main Canadian no is looking at Briss. coming back for let's talk of GSP Anderson Silver on the New Year's card. Oh yeah, which would be fucking amazing, really. Yeah. It's wish it 
my uh, selfish reasons. I wish it was 2011 where they mm. did it, but it's better that better than it happens now. They're not seeing it at all. I think they're hungry now. I, I would love to. People are seeing the money. Yeah. People are seeing oh, their paychecks yeah. at the high end guys like McGregor and stuff are cashing, and yep. they're thinking, I want some of George, this. George would be 36 at that point. Shit. So fucking get it in while you can, man. Probably still it... box jump really high though, bro. Oh, George. Would... Oh, oh man. he would still he wouldn't take time off really. Yep. He'd still be doing his gymnastics. Thirty five, and... isn't he? Yeah, he's thirty five. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think he will tick over to thirty six by the New Year's. So same age he as could Dan have... Bilzerian. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's two dudes living a match up uh, a different kind of lifestyle. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. George has only had one heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking <laughs> GSP, but touching on UFC, we have to touch on um, UFC 204 from Manchester on the weekend uh, and still middleweight champion Michael Bisping. Um, the main event, if you had have asked me leading in if that goes five ra- told me it goes five rounds in a razor-thin no decision, way. I would have laughed in your face. Mm. And if you had have told me that um, Bisping was going to survive partway oh. through that first round, oh. I would have laughed in your Trouble. face. I thought it was it, all over. Yeah. If you didn't see it um, and you're not familiar with MMA, Dan Henderson is 46 years old. This was his retirement fight. Um, a lot of experts say, you know, if there's a Mount Rushmore of mixed martial arts in terms of that big mountain in the in the States with the, the president's skulls on there, if there's a... A Mount Rushmore of MMA, Dan Henderson is 100% on that. <laughs> he's gone out of fucking legend and has, he's got gotten older, but the last thing that you lose is your power. And he is, yep. he cracked Bisping in the first round, uh, dropped him terribly, came in with ground and pound to try and finish him. Bisping just managed to gut it out. And uh, it was a razor thin decision from Bisping. If, you were, if you're from America, I've been all over the forums, seem to think if you're from America, you thought Dan Henderson won. They tried to have, give him rounds one, two, and five. But Bisping, it was similar. I said to uh, the boys on our WhatsApp chat that it was similar to Anderson versus Bisping for mine where Bisping lands all the volume because his gas tank is so good. He can go hard for 25 minutes every time. He landed a lot of volume, but Hendo and Anderson landed the fucking hard shots. Yeah. That's why a, a fight is such a tremendously hard thing to try and score and to try and come up with a with a system of scoring to, to judge the fight on because... You know, you could you could sit there and analyze every round to be like, okay, I think Bisping got the you know, ju- ju- judging on the criteria that we have, you know, significant strikes, mm. amount of strikes, all this different stuff. You know, who who wins that round? And obviously there is a system, but you know, sometimes you just watch a fight in terms of the flow of the entire twenty five minutes of that fight. You know what I mean? And you and you get a feel for it. And the feel of that fight was that Dan Henderson like. <sighs> almost like won that fight, but then there was like almost like a second fight that I think Bisping got the better of. Mm. Just sort of the flow of the fight, accumulation, control. And and that's not even sort of, I guess everything is a criteria, but that's not on like an official criteria. It's just on the vibe of the fight. You know, yeah. what, you know what I'm trying oh, to say? Definitely. I definitely do. There's a lot of people out there that scored it one, two, five to Hendo. Well, Henderson got a takedown in round five. Didn't do a whole lot from there, but still managed to get Bisping down, which is not an easy thing to do. But in the second round, that's the round that's really up in the air for people because Bisping landed something like 40 shots to 17 in that round, but Hendo dropped him late in the Mm. round. So he got outpointed, was getting tooled up on the feet a little bit. Hendo comes and drops him. Does that mean he steals the round? Mm. That's where Mm. it's so hard to interpret, Mm. isn't it? But I think if if you get 100 people like trained in like sort of like judging a fight and what what the outcome would be, mm. you know, what would it be? What would be the swing? Some the watching it close because I think people watch it differently. People watch around differently. I know I've like recently watched a lot of boxing and I've tried to judge, be my own judge. And you know, everyone's gonna like mm. unless it's like clear, someone's just telling him up. It's gonna look close, man. That's right. The ten point must system is belongs to boxing, and the mixed martial arts have just sort of taken that and ran with it. I wouldn't mind seeing him switch to. Not necessarily a ten point must system at all. Having a ten minute first round and then two five minute rounds, and then mm. judge it at the end of the fight who won, who won. I not like not idea. like oh well he he won early then he got those rounds. Yep. Just judge it as a whole. Yeah. Just see, it. I'd really like to see him go that way, but you know it's hard, hard to try and change it up with athletic commissions and things like that. But yeah, I think well, that when you work. think about it in its purest form, it's like two people hand to hand combat, like a street fight, you know. Yeah, and. Um, and you judge a street fight not based on, oh, well, he, you know, he had control over that. It's like you judge it on, okay, who fucked who up the most and, 
yeah. basically comes down to whoever is less injured at the end of the if fight. You, if you looked at no, um, maybe that's not true. I don't if know. If you're on the if you're in the room that night and you someone just flicked on the TV at the when they're doing the decision, and you just put it on mute and said, "Hey, these two guys have just fought. Who won?" Everyone, if you to the untrained eye, everyone just looks at Dude, fucking, just says Dan that's Henderson me. won. And Hendo, that's Hendo. me. I w- Bisping, said it in his post fight. Yeah, <laughs> Bisping was, was a fucking. I really mess. wish they judged a fight on whoever <laughs> looks better at the end of the fight. <laughs> <laughs> this is the like, last time you'll ever see me in here. <laughs> My kids couldn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like he was a bit <laughs> dirty at his kids for not coming. He's like. I'm going to let everyone know. They weren't know. here for my last fight, yeah, but I love you guys. <laughs> didn't get his swan song in Vegas or anything nah, like that. No, that's he had true. To go, he had to go to Manchester, that's but, true. He, but could, he couldn't say no to that. Fuck yep. no, man. Yep. Fuck no. And that's um, an amazing fight for him to go out on. He, he went out for the middleweight title at 46 years old. Nobody can fuck nah, with that, man. Nah. That's a record that nobody will fuck yep. with. You know he what had, I mean? Yeah, dead right. He had nothing to prove coming in. Like yeah. He's held two different weight class belts in pride. He got the strike force belt mm. and has fallen just short a couple of times towards USC belts. So he doesn't have anything to prove and he can walk out now with 50-50. Some people saying he won, some people saying he lost. But yeah. either way, yeah. he went, he out went on his sword, 25 man. minutes at 46 years old. is <laughs> remarkable. Still yeah. throwing stones too. Yeah. yeah. Mas- uh, Masasi in the co-main event managed to uh, light up Vitor Belfort. It's I a think. fucking beast, man. I didn't realise Masasi's only 32, I think. Is he really? Oh, well, even yeah. thirty-one. Yeah, maybe, I think. Man. Yeah, he's um. He's younger than I thought, but he's just been around for fucking ages. He has. He's a crafty veteran and all, always turns up to fight. And uh, he's getting himself right in that picture as well. I mean, those guys at uh, in the top five there. There's basically a middleweight tournament coming up for the shot at Michael Bisping. You got on the two hundred five card, which is the next card coming up in November. You got Weidman Romero. And then two weeks after that's Rock Old Jacare. Oh, yeah. So to whoever makes a Lying huge up, statement yeah. out of those guys, whoever really puts their hand up, I reckon will end up getting the title shot. But uh, for mine, Bisping might have to uh, enjoy this feeling while it lasts because he's got some <laughs> fucking straight killers <laughs> that yeah, want, want to get their hands on him. Fucking shark tank! Oh, it is brutal. I love 185. You know what though? Like in all fairness, there is this kind of air of like, oh, you've got your Chris Weidman, you've got your Luke Rockholds, your Anderson Silvers, like these massive stalwarts of the middleweight division. But Michael Bisping has got some fucking impressive names on his record, man. Yeah. He's like, he's no fucking slouch. Oh, and yeah. like, you know, the, 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 I, I guess this title defense wasn't necessarily the next in line sort of contender. It was somewhat of this entertainment model that we're mm-hmm. seeing more, but, um, fuck man, he's, he's, a beast at middleweight. Bisping you can't doesn't. Bisping. You're dead right, man. He hasn't. He doesn't shy away from anyone. If you tell him to fight, he'll be there. He's got uh, the most wins of anyone in UFC history now. Came through well, Ultimate Fighter, yeah. man. Like, yeah, he really. Won a season of tough. He came from just a pommy dude. Had dyed man. hair and fucking. Yeah, that you know, shaved oh, that's head. Right. Yeah, that real. Yeah, yeah that yeah. zero blade. It back seemed then, like man. he was like you know somebody that would be from the suburbs here. You yeah, know, like a hard lad that you would have known yeah. growing up. Like. And uh, still coming out e- even at that point was. Um, Cocky as fuck. Oh yeah, just that hard brit, yeah. hard brit. Always banter, man. Yeah, I, I, I like this thing. I always yeah. have been been able to fortunate enough to see him fight live once when he lost to Rockold first up. But yeah, good on him. And he's got uh, the next fight that he'll have will be fucking massive. And he's getting probably towards the end of the career. So I just hope he gets paid up like yeah. a motherfucker now. Mm. But he's in the fortunate position that there are four fucking savages oh. in that <laughs> fucking weight division Wouldn't that now have to fight each other. Yeah. That fucking mm. one of them potentially is going to get a title shot. You don't think the two of those would have to f- fight? That no, would yes. take way too long. Whoever puts yep. their hand up the most whoever, here is whoever makes a massive statement out man. of. I hope Weidman it's, fucking. I hope it's Yoel. Yoel. I hope it's Yoel. Oh man, <laughs> him versus uh, Yoel versus Bisping would be fucking incredible. If you haven't seen Yoel Romero, he's um looks like something you'd see on a video game. He's from like Cuba. He's a, he's Cuban. He's Cuban. Late late thirties was an Olympic freestyle wrestler who just has this physique that you just don't see people like that every day. It looks like yeah, he's got it looks like when you were a kid and you had like some crazy like not even action man but like a crazy mm. hunched over army man that was just like <laughs> built with yeah. muscle. Like he's just got two rock melons for pets. <laughs> like coming I mean, just <laughs> no so neck, fuck, no, no neck, just unbelievable. And you got a for a guy that got into MMA so late, he has just come through and fucking gone on an absolute tear. So. <laughs> Good for him. All man. the best, man. More middleweights on that 205 card too. Uh, Rashad Evans, Tim Kennedy is on the prelims for that. Tim Kennedy's got a win over Bisping. Yeah. So yeah. 
Speaking you know what fucking insulting. amazes me, man, is if I was to fight in the UFC tonight, I would have to fight at that weight, at that division. Like those guys must weigh a hundred kilos and cut down to eighty four kilos. Like you can get um, those get dudes are like tag. Chris Rock. Uh, fucking Luke Rockhold is like Chris Rock. <laughs> Chris Rock. <laughs> I was going to say Chris, Chris Rock's Ro- ass. Chris Rockhold. <laughs> fucking yeah. Luke White. Yeah, I'll fight yeah. you. <laughs> No, he's like 6'3 or some shit, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, he's yeah. massive, man. That's he's massive. Insane, man. Like, if, I, if I was to get in the cage right now, I'd, uh, I'd take on Rumble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him eating pads the oh, other day, man. All I'm saying, yeah. I feel sorry for Rumble, man. Well, speaking of <laughs> cele- celebrity <laughs> sightings. Those ball throws, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hammer fist. <laughs> celebrity sightings, man. My um, buddy saw Luke Rockhold in Santa Cruz a few weeks back. And said that he was just fucking jacked. Just saw him walking down the street like summertime or whatever with his shirt off. And um, just said this this guy is fucking enormous. Mm. Like Brad Thorne. Mate, lady killer. <laughs> <laughs> lady. lady killer. Oh yeah. Rock old uh, jeez. Isn't he on, he's got I love that Joe Rogan bit. He's like, the only reason any guy ever has got laid is because Luke Rockhold didn't get there first. <laughs> <laughs> but man, you you have to fucking do yourself a favor. And YouTube the episode of Millionaire Matchmaker that that Luke Rockhold went on, man. It really, was, <laughs> it he got was, set up. He got oh, it was a stitch up. up. Man. He got really, really stitched up. So it's basically like this show where this sort of haggard old plastic surgery fucking Joan Rivers looking thing does like. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Joan. <laughs> does like. <laughs> I got nothing against Joan, oh, but yeah. yeah, she she knew what she was about, like. But um, you know what I'm talking about? That sort of oh, real oh, dude. Everyone in yeah, yeah, LA. Yeah. 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 Needs no explanation. Let me tell you about this. <laughs> Botch facelift. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and, and so he basically goes on as this guy who's, you know, this UFC fighter. He's 29. He's never had a girlfriend in his life. And she's the matchmaker. She has to find, but he's essentially like a millionaire. So, oh, so yeah. she's going to find yeah. like a bunch of suitable women to... Um, for him to court, for him yep. to court, and oh. and and potentially find a mate out of. Think about think about that for a second. Twenty nine, never had a business. Yeah, right. <laughs> and she's she's putting <laughs> yeah she's putting that on him because yeah. she's like brash and and says what like you know what she's thinking and stuff like that. So she's like, am I going to have to disinfect this thing? Oh. Like and all this sort of stuff to him. Yes, yeah, like, <laughs> probably was. <laughs> <laughs> and so like. True to form, like he, he starts talking about, you know, I'm, I'm ready to settle down, I'm ready to find the one and stuff like this. But true to form of what she's like implying at the start of the show, man, he goes through this this process and once they bring in these sort of like five or six like really banging hot sort of like LA, mm. LA type white chicks that would just be straight up Luke Rockhold Street, you know. Easy. And um, Oh, and not so the women, but... Well, easy well, match. Has, <laughs> or maybe I don't easy know. for it takes, Luke. Yeah. It takes it takes a fucking turn for the worse for oh. Luke, man. Because he takes this one chick on a date, and they start having um, champagne on this yacht that they're on, and uh, he must get a little bit tipsy because he starts getting like, I don't know if it was edited, and yeah. she was getting inappropriate with him, but he started like grabbing her ass and he said a joke at one point about like do you spit or swallow oh, yeah. and oh. so they've edited it back to make him look like a fucking asshole and and say that the chick is like really upset and she felt threatened they get her on like a, a voice recording no. call to, to the Stitcher. matchmaker chick really? and then so the end of the, like Luke Rockhold section of the show is like the 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 Joan Rivers lookalike or whatever sitting there, and and Luke has to come in and see how he went on the date, and he cruises in in his jandals and shit, and just like after training, thinking like, he's killed it, <laughs> thinking he's killed it, and she's like, go. Get the fuck out of out of my studio. Get out of my show. Like fucking <laughs> and he and like it's it's obvious that he didn't know he was he was coming in to get roasted like that. And and she starts talking about how inappropriate you were and all this sort of shit. He had to put out a tweet afterwards that was like, My family and my friends know who I really am. That shit was edited. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. <laughs> he had to make a public statement about well, it. Well fucking LA, shut LA, LA fuckboy. Yeah, they I got not, you, baby. I'm not mad at all, bro. I'm no, not no. mad. No, they all. just threw him under the bus but with it, the editing. With the editing, it was entertaining as a but motherfucker. That, that's what as a saw. UFC fan, anyway. Thank his manager for that one. That's man. what you sign yourself up for with reality TV, though. With that, like you can be dubbed any way possible. You think you're going in with the best intentions, thinking, Absolutely. "Yeah, the country, the country's going to get to know me. This is going to be awesome. I'm a really good guy. I've got a lot of friends, and they can just go in there and take 
three or four sentences out of a four-hour conversation and just make you look like a fucking oh. tool. Oh, Edit yeah. your reaction from Tuesday to something yeah. that was said on Thursday. Mm. It's like... That, yeah, yeah, the like, music, yeah. the background music like, too. Oh, man, he was really pissed off when yeah. she said that. Because like, oh, like, oh, yeah. they got a look of his scowling. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Is that hardly... Is that fair? That sort of stuff? And then, yeah. With the, yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. Totally. Fucking hell, dude. Saying yeah. something at night. It's early in the morning. The next, like yeah. you know, they try, mate. They will make you believe anything. It's a crazy thing now, though, that UFC fighters, or something that was underground as a motherfucker, not even sort of a decade ago, is um is now to the to that sort of celebrity status of like lots mm. of like Conor McGregor and Ronda Rousey. They're becoming household names, big oh, time. Yeah. If, even yeah. if you haven't heard of. Cage fighting, you've you've maybe heard of Ronda Rousey and Conor McGregor. I don't Connor, know, would you agree? Absolutely, yeah, Connor. Connor. Yeah, a couple of uh, young fellas that I work with that aren't huge UFC fans by any stretch of the imagination. When's that Connor fight on again? Mm. He's yeah. a character, yeah, and that's because they're that's all what the, people the latch on to social media generation. Yeah. So they're all following yeah. the notorious. But you mentioned Rousey's name there. She's back. She's got the got the fight booked for the New Year's card. Yep, two oh seven versus Ooh. Ronda. Oh. Ronda versus Manny Nunez for the title. Oh, Nunez, yeah, tough. But chick that beat down yeah. Tate. That's not an easy comeback fight for Ronda. They've seen Ooh. the demons that she would have gone through after getting starched up like that. But she has taken extended time off, which is probably a good idea Wise, after copying yeah. a, copying Wise. a head trauma like that. She didn't yep. go the fucking Jose Aldo route or whatever and just back up on sort of short notice or anything like that, risking the uh, oh no Chad Mendez. Right, mm. remember when Chad. He got stopped Starched. by Connor, backed up against Frankie, yep. boom, starched. Yep. That's right. Like you don't yeah. really see Frankie knocking too many people out. And he managed to get it get clipped. So Chad, Chad probably didn't have the same swing that Ronda mm. had, though. He had to he had to make his opportunity that's, somewhat. That's yeah. true, yeah. She was yeah, in a dark place fair. after that, man. Absolutely. Yeah. On Ellen, yeah. talking about very dark, yeah. yeah. Talking about um Attempting her own life afterwards. I never saw the interview, but I, is that? Yeah, is it was. That, did, did, she, yeah. did you watch she, it? Did she contemplate it? Or? Yeah, she's like, what else? You know, what? Yeah. And it was her partner, I think, the trainer who's. Travis. Sort of, yeah, got Travis her out of that. Brown. Yeah, it's, all, it's mental health week. So, yeah. yeah, are you okay? You make sure you go um, ask your friends and stuff. It's mental health week and just make sure you uh, check everyone's all right. That's it. I'll send Ronda a tweet after yeah. this. Like, oh, are you okay? In the DM? Yeah. Slide in. Yeah. We're following each other, so I would be able to slide in. <laughs> um, you imagine that. <laughs> Fucking hell. One of our buddies got, uh, shout out to Justin. He's got um, followed by Ricky Lundell. Started following him on Instagram Ooh. the other day. He's like the jiu-jitsu and wrestling coach for like Carlos Condit and all the dudes at Jackson. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right. Just through like the jiu-jitsu hashtag or something so they nice. start, you followed him and you nice. like naturally followed him he's got a good page shit. man Justin. he does yeah you know, he, that, that ninja kick where in that lighting yeah definitely yeah bro that, yeah, that filter man oh yeah i caught up with him on the weekend actually he's down and um just for a couple of hours down the coast and he'd just finished um he was at the mma gym up on the at southport or something doing jiu-jitsu there so not only training at his um his own access gym, but he's going up there to get extra rounds in on Saturdays against like the MMA fighters and shit. Really committed, bro. Mm. He is a I think warrior. He, he's, seems to be. He's got a lot on his plate with uni and like mm. training and mm. stuff, but he seems Definitely. to think he seems to think MMA is in the in the future for him. So it's crazy, like you know, f- for us, like total fucking non participants whatsoever. Just love watching. Just love being an audience. Um, and and look at somebody like Justin who's you know balancing like you're saying like multiple different things and um and how committed fucking he seems imagine like the Conor McGregor end of the oh, spectrum where God. these dudes like obsessed is yeah. is not even the the way to describe this it, is you know talent I mean? this is obsession imagine oh, being yeah. imagine being D Devlin you know you, you, she she would have to to put up with this is one hundred percent the Conor show like yeah. And and not not necessarily put up with like you know that's that's obviously the dynamic that they have worked out and I'm sure you know she gets enough love and attention mm. to be to be more than happy to stick around in that situation but um, but he would be so fucking intense all the time to be with so much about fighting like. There's no chance that she could be a chick that was like, I don't, I don't really like the yeah. fight. Like, <laughs> oh, so I'm, I'm like, I'm not really into it. This <laughs> is boring. This Let's is go boring. somewhere. Like, yeah. Can you just hurry yeah. up? You'll do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> You'll do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> You'll do nothing. You'll fucking sit there. <laughs> fucking hell. It's been kind of got fined actually for that. He, uh, he, fuck, he loves a press conference at McGregor, but uh, the Nevada Athletic Commission leading into his, uh, his fight with Nate, he... 
gotten an incident at the press conference where he, st- he threw a couple of Monster Energy cans <laughs> off the table <laughs> at Diaz's crew who were up in the back of the, uh, of the auditorium. And he got fined 150 grand for that this week. I got fined more than people get paid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. He put like put the tweet up for it, which is true. Like not many other guys would be making 150, but uh, he's come out and said that he never wants to fight in Nevada again after that. Oh, and, really? And um, the thing is, he doesn't have to. Mm. That's it. And yeah. like even Dana came out and supported him with that. He's like, fucking athletic commission. Like, why would you go and do that? Aggravate one of the guys, like, yeah. the biggest draw the card that the town can get at the moment. And go and tell like and go and find the shit out of him, which makes him sort of repent against them, sort of thing. Mm. Yeah, but I guess they want to definitely protect their interest and stamp out any sort of um, mm. behavior that crosses the line in terms of get you yourself know, a John Jones Cormier on your hands. That was awesome. Some, yeah, some two pack style I mean, at a Tyson fight. Yeah, you know, like, ultimately <laughs> it's fucking. America's pretty ruled Rip. by that Bible Belt, bro. Mm. Like, uh, there's a lot of conservative Americans that um, I got a um, a buddy of mine who's only just come back from um, from the US. He spent an like extended period of time over there, going all through different parts of Atlanta and all, all across the place, but off the grid places where stock standard Australians don't go on that. Like, nice. where'd you go? I went to uh, LA, Vegas, New York, mm. like that sort of stuff. This is America in its heartland. He reckons there was a few nights where he'd go out, got a bit of fluff, and actually got cock blocked by Jesus a few Oof. times. Where re- re- <laughs> we, should yeah, probably, yeah. we should probably oh. rewind that about <laughs> ten seconds and explain <laughs> all that slang that was in that fucking yeah, yeah. sentence. He got, Block uh, a road. Yeah, he, uh, got, <laughs> he got. Uh, he'd go out, go out to a bar, um, be like, "Oh, I'll come back, get get into bed with these girls," and they'd be like, "Oh." You know, are, are we gonna fuck? He's like, oh no, I'm I'm saving myself for marriage. Like, I'll blow you though. And he's like, oh, well, all right, well, okay. <laughs> so I got a could, ton of blowjobs. Yeah, it could be worse, but yeah, it didn't happen every time. But he said it happened on a few instances in these places. But crazy, oh, eh? Man, what was that story? I'm I'm vaguely recollecting Kyle telling me a story about somebody traveling in the oh. UK and getting um. Unbel- going back to a, who went, going uh, back to a girl's place who turned out to be a dude. Who um who robbed them? No, nah, there was uh there was a sto- yeah there's a story of that Kyle told. I re- fully remember this where uh his mate went to. I'm pretty sure it's yeah. it's anonymous. We can roll with that, right? Is that in um was in the, that in, in the in the UK? He went on a Tinder date. Oh, come come back to my place. G- goes upstairs. The date's going really well. Come back to my place. Walk upstairs. Oh, honey, just stay here. I'm gonna go get a uh. I'm just gonna go get a glass of water. Three Sudanese blokes come upstairs with <laughs> fucking knives and machetes. Give us all your shit, or we'll fucking kill you. <laughs> Gives him hands over their shit and kicks him out. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> of course you would. I, I swear that was you that told us that. Uh, I've no, I've had a uh, a couple of mates uh, on Rockle. Um, we were in Munich for Oktoberfest, so. What do a couple of AJs do that haven't drunk anything for three months straight? Go do first. Oktoberfest, a fucking beer Whoa, festival. Oh shit! Yeah, oh Bunch man, of Cadbury's getting around. Oh, bro, we yeah, and these guys, they actually, uh, they one woke up in the outskirts of Munich, so a few hours or oh, next few towns over, uh, no passport, no money, nothing, and we were given um, like diplomatic passports as well, and like. To get back into Afghan to do like and then go to uh, Dubai and Afghan, and he got that stolen and he, man, and he got stitched up and he couldn't remember a thing. No, how do you get him back? Oh, he he to took jump it, through about a dozen hoops. He took it like a champ. He went and got it actually pretty quick because of the situation we were in, and he was off to Ibiza <laughs> <laughs> for a week. Oh. Yeah. Right. Have you been to Ibiza? No, I have no, not. No, no. Nor, nor I. I've heard mixed things. Yeah. Some, some people said it's great. Some people said you need to take a truckload of cash to really make it to yeah. the all time. I've heard yeah, that too. Well, it, it is kind of expensive. Like um, I spent a bit of time in um, Majorca, Palma de Majorca, which is the next island up from Ibiza. Right. So I did like a little boat trip to Ibiza for one weekend. But yeah, it was a spenny weekend. You're talking like sort of 600 bucks a night accommodation. Oh, yeah. But that's like you know that's all of your all of your mates and everything staying as well. But um, your drug club dealers entries, rock up in uh, um, Ferraris, not oh. not, yeah. not bucks actually, um, euros. So um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Your uh, your club entry is sixty euros. Oof. 
So it's it's pretty hefty cover charge. Drinks drinks aren't cheap. But um yeah, I mean it's like anything. If you focus on the fucking how much it costs, then you won't yeah. you won't have a very good time. When but in Rome you're gonna get stuck into it, aren't yeah, you? Yeah. But I it? think in terms of um the Balearic Islands, which are like this little cluster of islands off the coast of Spain in the Mediterranean, it's probably um there's Menorca, Majorca, Formentera and Ibiza. And uh I've been to all of them except for Formentera. No, no, no. I went to Formentera, not Menorca, but both Majorca and um, Formentera were, were way nicer than Ibiza. But Ibiza's just got all the super clubs and shit like yeah. that. But it's crazy, man. You, you're driving down this like it's like this tiny sort of like little desert drop in the Mediterranean, and um, everywhere you look is just these giant billboards of like fucking Carl Cox or mm-hmm. you know, the biggest DJs, Stafford Brothers, or I oh, don't even not know. The I, I'm, yeah, like I'm <laughs> not. Uh, I'm not too. Brushed up on my, my massive DJs, but <laughs> DJ Shadow. I went to one club. I went to Pasha, <laughs> sixty bucks entry, and um, it was crazy, man. It's like they call it a super club for a fucking reason. It's like a giant fucking room that you walk into where there's like five or six chicks in cages just dancing, and then there's some other like DJ on the stage with a whole bunch of dancers and pink flamingo mascot things jumping around, and they're shooting streamers and lights and all kinds of shit into the air, and then Bad you walk into the next room, and it's like a hip hop room, and there's like some some dudes break dancing up on stage and then to the right of stage they've got some like barber shit set up where you can go get your hair cut like in the club and then there's like so many different like rooftop bars and balconies and like it's fucking insane man it's absolutely fucking insane it's like yo tighten me up fam. yeah let's go (laughs) i'm about to hit that d floor tighten me up (laughs) (laughs) fucking hell what about mono, hey? Oh, shit. Rip, mono. <laughs> That's where we were at. Yeah, would it kill you to put some fucking chairs in there for <laughs> some cuts? Like, God damn, mate. <laughs> oh, man, I haven't seen a, a good DJ or any DJ in a long time, bro. No, no, no nor I, nor I. They d- definitely went through a phase of enjoying going and watching that type of thing with a f- couple of festivals and things like that. But um, look, the odd, uh, the odd jam will come on in my shuffle. Like, oh, a yeah. A bit of... Um, Oh, he's dead mouse and things like yeah. that. That'll come on in my shuffle from time to time if I'm walking to work, and I'll, I'll keep it on from like some days. Some you days I'll skip straight through, but yeah, yeah. Like I think you'd be telling a lie if you said that you'd never dance to one of those like club tracks out when you were out or you oh, know yeah. having a good time. I've been like, this is the Danced jam, the hard, song. exactly. Yeah. Oh man. But my thing is like, I I I can listen to music first thing when I wake up in the morning. But I can't listen to that music when I wake up first thing in the morning. And sometimes I wonder who can. I'm like, who's getting up, like driving to work, and then it's just like, let me put this fucking real hectic Nick skits on. Like, yeah, you know who, just... man? It's the guys that didn't sleep. Yeah. It's the guys that are wearing those the hammer pants, mate. I've, uh, I was on the train the other day, the other morning on the the, the daily commute. There was a person on there, hand on heart. I swear that they were listening to Steps five six seven eight loud in a just set a straight uh, iPhone or, or Apple one so that you're not noise cancelling or anything so you can hear what the person's fucking listening to. And this was all of twenty past seven. Did you eyeball? Going, are you in a time warp from fucking nineteen ninety four? Fuck off. You know what I saw on the train and I had to pull this dude up. Oh, really? um, it was in the quiet carriage. And um, they have on, on uh, Queensland Rail, they have quiet carriages uh, on the trains. And um, basically it says something like refrain from loud conversations or playing loud music or something like that. And there was fucking nobody in this carriage on this particular morning that I was going to work. <clears throat> and um, this school kid was sitting like in the four-seater across from me. And um, he had his music in. You could sort of hear it through his earphones. Like, I don't think he had noise cancelling ones. You know how sometimes they come out louder, like yep. when you're sitting next to somebody? And there was a guy sitting on the little sort of disabled seat that's a, like directly behind the four-seater and um, was obviously getting the shits with this guy's music and starts like tapping him on the on the shoulder and then he's like, fucking turn your music down. And the kid's like, no, I'm not fucking turning oh. my music down. He's like... How old's the kid and how old's the guy? The dude's probably in grade 12 and the, and the guy's like well into his 30s, like oh. late 30s, early 40s, man. On his commute to work, like what's what's eating you, gr- Gilbert yeah. Grape? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and, um, and so he... Um, <laughs> If that dude was 10 years older, he and wouldn't so the, have said And shit. so the kid kind of like ignores him a little bit and just like puts his earphones back in, just like, fucking leave me alone, man. And then the dude starts like 
like tapping him real hard on the shoulder and then sort of like tapping it and the, and the kid's like, what? I turned it down. I turned it down for you, man. And then he starts like, and he's like, nah, he didn't turn it down enough and starts like ripping the thing out of his ear and sort of like tapping him in the ear. And I was like, mate, you don't, you don't fucking touch him, all right? Like, Ooh. you know, and he's like, he's, he's not supposed to have his music loud. And I was like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't give you the right to touch him, man. And then, school and, kid too. And then yeah. everybody just kind of went quiet in the train and then it was just like this awkward little like yeah. couple of stations until this dude got off and the, and the school kid stayed on and nothing else was said. Like that that was it. But I felt like, you know, yeah. at that that sort of situation, it's like, are you bullying this dude, man? Mm. Like, you know, just because he's sort of giving you a bit of cheek, he doesn't want to like turn around, gives you absolutely no right to touch the kid. Man. And who no, are you know, anyway, yeah. man? Who the fuck yeah. are you yeah. to why tell you, someone why, to tell you music why you so Why are you so angry, man? Why, it's like it's 8 a.m. in the morning. It's like... Like you know, another another day breathing. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Chill out, That's guy. That's it. Um, you followed much of the Gable Tosti murder trial. Yeah, man, I've read a little bit. A little bit. Uh, crazy oh. how much stuff's come out about that. So now. much, Ooh. so so they detailed. Pieced it together like a motherfucker. Did you hear really his call, man? He when he called his dad. The calls the text. It, he the was video. chilling. Like mm. he was way too calm. He's like, "Yep, cops are everywhere." Oh yeah, you better come around. Yeah. Like he was ice cold. Definitely. It amazes it is, me it how much the six o'clock news media has become like forty eight hours or something. And it's like we've recreated there's no such thing as privacy anymore. We've got our hands on all that shit. We're gonna play it to start to finish. And it's a legit dramatic story. It in, oh, it like pulls you right in. You're like, oh man, look at this. We've got we're piecing the text together on the timeline with like a recreation of somebody dangling their yeah, legs down man. from the building and stuff. They like, did, yeah, they did a full reenactment full re- of it. Of um whereas I've I've been following along through reading m- more so than listening to oh, it. But okay. um I I'd be interested to sort of he- hear the exact sort of correspondence. Have you seen a lot of the, like the footage of him going to get a slice of I, pizza I have, directly yeah. afterwards? Yep. And all that sort yep. Of stuff. Like the there was more information came out today where so do you she was three times the legal limit. So, like so the, would he have walked past the body like out on the on the road and gone? Yeah, to yeah. Slice yeah. Of he, she went off, went over the allegedly went over the balcony, went inside, changed his shirt, changed his pants, went down, got a slice of pizza, rang his dad, called his dad, like. Yeah, she, we were having sex. She felt pretty like chill. Or, yeah, a- absolutely. But um, I don't know what yeah. I don't know what to think. Well, the audio that you heard, and this has total, totally become like the View or something. A bunch of gossip girls sitting around. <laughs> nah, but it's it's uh, relevant for the like, Tinder for the man minute, too. Got him over on Tinder. Yeah. She was sourced up too. Well, you saw yes. that they'd been like interacting on Tinder, and then they went to the beer garden for less than two minutes, man. Before they were obviously like. Oh, you know what? Drinks are kind of spenny. Do you want to just get a six pack and go back yeah. to yeah. get back back yeah. to my place? Like, I like what I see. You want to head mm, back? Yeah, that, that can be yeah. that simple sometimes. Yeah, and then the audio of her going like crazy on the phone or whatever. So I know obviously Mu- I know Muay Thai. I'll fucking bash you. Like, she was saying that. She said, oh, was saying okay. that to him. So he, and he was like, "Fucking calm down. If you if you try anything, I'll knock you the fuck out. Like calm the right, fuck down." Right. So there no, was apparently a, strug- a struggle at some point in the unit. And he's locked her outside and sort of she's um, screaming. Other people have heard screams and a lady below had to give evidence in the courtroom yesterday where she was on a couple of floors lower at the Avalon Apartments, looked up to see what the commotion was and saw a set of legs hanging off and has seen her go over and she'd clipped a couple of balconies on the way down and and, and ended up hitting the ground and passed away immediately. Mm. But um, what the Crown are trying to imply is that she was locked outside through intimidation. She had no other choice but to yeah, get out yeah. of there. And they're saying that that constitutes murder. Yeah, no uh, way. I, I, I don't I know don't if... I'm so. not, not a huge law buff, but yeah, I don't I think know anybody. If... I think anybody who's been in a situation where they've been, like, heavily inebriated, or maybe even not so, man, you know, people people act outrageous all the time. And when you add in sex and and relationships and all that sort of stuff you can have some pretty extreme behaviors and emotions come over you and stuff and i think anybody who's you know lived their life has has experienced some sort of surge of emotion or some sort of you know intoxicated rage or something like that and ultimately what happened there was you know and this is totally me philosophizing from what i've seen on on news media that's Mm. painting it all for me but like you know it seems as though there's no premeditated intent for him him to have murdered her. It's it's a case of, 
shit went buck wild. Mm. She, you know, didn't feel good after the sex or whatever. Sometimes that happens. Like one party's left feeling like the, you know, it w- it wasn't how they wanted it to go or whatever. And there's tension and and ultimately there's a fight. And then all of a sudden it all gets a bit heated. She decides to get on the balcony like drunk and um and there's no coming back from that. No. And then and then he's in a position of you know what the fuck does he do? But at the same time, there's there's so many different layers. There's so many different things that's like, you know, I guess, mm. fuck. I, f- I found you, you myself. You feel like, should he have more remorse about the situation? Should he have run down and, and fucking, and seen if, like, she was all right and him be the mm. one to call the police, not just Definitely. not just walk away from the body and shit like that? You'd think in that situation, if you were with somebody, if you'd even just shared a, a, a brief encounter or connection with them, and uh, and regardless of, of whatever emotional behavior they may have been capable of at the time Mm. if they're you know dead or dying or fucking close to surely you snap out of your disinterest for them and as a human being you reach out to that that person and fucking do the right Mm. thing by them and their family and all that sort of shit i don't know i guess it's like you're talking morality or something but it it just seems cold like i've I've found myself such a foreign thing to try and put yourself in the mindset of what would you actually do that's what i found myself doing when i'm reading the articles and i from both sides of the story too where it's such a tragedy that a, a young girl has lost her life but at the same time if she had her time again, could she? If she was in des- desperate need of help, could she have just? It's an apartment building where hundreds of people yeah. are living. Scream! Someone call the police! It's an emergency! Help! She's Something been... like that, where her rationale was perhaps if there wasn't a struggle and he didn't throw her over, she's decided to climb down from a fourteenth story. That's that's where I think there's potential for him to get off. And I'm not saying I agree with it, but I th- I think he will. Get off I is, think so is, Doesn't it just exemplify How fucking crazy This whole system of laws And judicial system That we have is Where it's like Somebody that's the same Human being That's capable Of all the behaviours That those two individuals Who are involved in that night Are capable of Are presiding over this And there's a system of You know Laws And we can get you On different technicalities To prove The Crown wants to prove this The defence wants to prove that And eventually The judge is going to decide On on who's ticked all the boxes In terms of the law structure That we've Mm. come up with For this society And And really That situation Is just an aberration In human behaviour It's a crazy fucking night and you added alcohol and mm. and what and sex and whatever else into the mix and and sometimes human beings implode sometimes fucking all the time human beings are full of faults and full of imperfections Do you imagine like it, and as you say it was probably all of just this crazy hour of their life mm. you know what i mean mm. where it was yeah. it, the, the shit changed where it affects not just those two involved, but the families and everything. It's just yeah, it's just a wild situation. And she was over here for a wedding, so yeah. she'd been drinking all day. Her blood alcohol. She wasn't thinking rational. Point you know? one five six. Yeah, yeah, you know, like so that's pretty pissed. And I've I've been. We've all been to maybe a wedding or two, and after a big night or a big day or something, and then to add on top of that, you just it all day and I don't know, man. Mm. It just doesn't sound good, but it hopefully uh, it will. Be done sort of quickly, won't drag out. So well, this is parties. like fucking after the fact, man. You're seeing on like social media now, shits popping up like in the states, like Tinder date murdered and stuff mm. like that. And it's happened months, and mm. it was last year, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's yeah. Ye- it's years ago. So it's like been... it's only that's how fucking slow this judicial system is. These these families have been dragged through this for the last twelve months or more, mm. and uh, and it, and it won't be over anytime soon. It'll be it'll be dragged on forever, and the result will never be what both parties want it to be. It's it's the nature of the beast. Yep. Like, but um, there'll be and, appeals, and, and it's like you know, will it's it's such a difficult thing to say what is justice and like is justice served like mm. when we execute somebody or when we sentence somebody to life imprisonment is justice served is is that gonna is that gonna bring that person back from the dead like there's you know uh, justice is a really tricky one like i think you can you can govern a society in terms of okay we need to lock up this guy who's killed 15 people because he has shows no remorse whatsoever and he hates so bad he can taste it like yeah, yeah, well i mean yeah. you look and, you look but, around but there's a difference between you know practical locking people up that are a danger to society versus like 
okay, is this just? Like, is this fair now? Mm. Like, do do we have redemption? Like, it's, it's such a crazy concept. Back, though, like, look how far it goes back. OJ. You know? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gable I mean, is yeah. the Aussie OJ. <laughs> Did he do it? Didn't he do it? Oh, it's oh, that white glove, divide. man. Yeah, yeah. But all it, like... The glove don't fit. The, uh, <laughs> must have quit. <laughs> <laughs> look at Chewbacca. Johnny Cochran. Just fucking... Look at the silly monkey. Yeah. <laughs> This is Chewbacca. <laughs> but if you go back, it, it, it hasn't changed much, you know. Like, look at the past, like, back in, you know, when we just had, a like, a justice system back in BC, you know, like, <laughs> not British Columbia, yeah, that is, that's, that. like, that's BC before Christ. Yeah, really. but, I mean, the, the whole thing has been subject to the imperfections of man. Like, in, we, I think we fucking discussed it on the podcast one before, but it was only... Um, in like 1889 or something like that within colonial Australian judicial system that indigenous people um, who were murdered, like if you murdered an indigenous person, you were charged with murder. Before mm-hmm. that, it was just like, oh, that's not written into the laws yeah. here. Like that's smooth and dying pillow. Who would be your top three uh, podcast guests, Moylee, if you could have dinner with um, with three... Sitting around a table, yeah. Three figures from um, from society that you're aware of. They can be alive or dead from any time of... Oh, wow. Okay. Um, Isaac Newton, for sure. Gable Tosti. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down with Gable. <laughs> I'd uh, choose uh, like a real uh, Ted Bundy. Ooh. Like you know, and then wow. uh, serve fucking Ted Bundy some uh, a nice. I just want to talk a to nice him, steak dinner and uh, yeah, it's all right. And a glass of wine. Yeah. Do you I want just some want more wine there, Ted. He ends up wearing you for, as a sleeping bag <laughs> that night. <laughs> just get him over just to lynch him in your in your living room. It man. puts the lotion on his skin. <laughs> Ted yeah. Bundy, yeah, that, all right, oh. Yeah, so gonna I, be, that's going to be intru- uh, probably, interesting. Are you like? Are you the type that <laughs> do you put him next like, to Isaac, um, or you? Are you quite interested in in serial killers, and do you find that like a fascinating yeah. subject? Yeah, man, I watch a lot of docos on that. Right, I it's like definitely a thing, man. Like they have fans. Mm. Like Ted Bundy had a whole bunch of women fans and stuff like that, and lots of people latch on to even the fame of a serial killer. Yeah. Isn't that a fucking crazy? There was thing? W- women outside the prison with him with. Making homemade posters like "Kill me, Ted." Like, <laughs> fucking uh, what? I don't know what the rationale is with that. They just love the bad guy or the the trouble that goes with it. But yeah, cocaine. So that, that's two. Uh, actually, you, you'd kind of want to do it in subjects like I don't know because you'd want them to interact with yeah, each other. You you're want, yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. Isaac, Ted, is. Ted, <laughs> Isaac, <laughs> like, Isaac. Uh, this is Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> And maybe Kurt, this is Tupac. And yeah. maybe Bill and Bill Murray. <laughs> Bill Murray. No, he would tell Bill the story. Bill Murray would be man. cool, man. Dude, I saw a video of him. Uh, I'd love to get Bill Murray in a podcast. He'd probably, you now that you imagine it, he'd probably be yeah, He'd just take over. <laughs> Anyone who's alive today, it'd probably be him. <laughs> saw a great video of him recently on uh, social media. The uh, Ryder Cup golf tournament got played uh, between Team Team America and Team Europe, and it's in the US, and Bill Murray's there as a part of the uh Team USA, <laughs> so he's allowed uh, like under the ropes and on the course. He just sort of follows him around, golf tragic. <laughs> and he's there in the full team uniform, and a lady's screaming at him from the fairway, just like Bill, Bill, like fucking come over. And he just like stops, walks straight up to her, and just pretends to go up to her face, grabs her behind the head, and just like pretends to just go in and <laughs> mack on with her real hard. And he's just like, call me, call me, and just turns around and walks away. It's like there's probably the best part of like five or six hundred people there. Just, <laughs> you. <laughs> They're all drunk, like yeah. It's, what a character! Uh, yeah, man. the uh, the uh, what would Bill Murray do? Oh. That's uh, that's that's a life motto to live by, folks. <laughs> that's uh, that's the one. Bill Murray for president, and that's my final thought for tonight. Mm, yeah, we're signing off right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but honestly, pu- people, what uh, what would Bill Murray do? Be good to each other. Well, uh, thanks for heaps for uh, joining us on this one. Anything you want to say, Bruce? Yeah, much love. We took we took a little break, but. Uh, we know you're hungry for it, so we hope you keep listening in. Uh, we'll be back next week, definitely. And uh, 205 on the horizon, peeps. That's There's going to be uh, lots of chat around that. We just hope that everybody stays healthy, everybody stays booked, and that uh, that shit is going to be ridiculous. Stay happy, stay hungry. <laughs> Thanks once again to uh, to Kyle Stephen for joining us. Always for a pleasure. Me. Open invitation and uh, talk soon, peeps. Sounds good. See you later.